Wired Access. We'll do it live. Wired Access. Do it live. Wired Access. We'll do it live. Wired Access. Welcome to Wired Access Podcast, where I'm your host, DJ K Dub Home. Oh, whoa. Cut that, man. Woo. <laughs> Good right. thing about podcasts. I know, oh, man. Welcome to Wired Access Podcast, where I'm your host, DJ K Dub Omaha. We're a part of the Herd at Sports Production. To my left, I have from Drake University, JD Snover, who is one of their sports directors from the college side and an assistant here for the NCAA tournament this last weekend. And then I also have to his left one new guy who's joining the team of Wired Access. We have Derek Brown from Iowa Western, who's a major in what what are you doing social media at all right sports media sports yeah. media so he's joining the team he's joining the podcast today i wanted to bring him out see what we do here and i greatly appreciate you listening especially those who continue to go out and support the omaha supernovas last home game we hit another record we are top four out of the top five attendance we hit twelve thousand tomorrow night the 28th we are looking down at the chi center versus grand rapid rise and we're looking to bring it back to that twelve thousand, if not more come out join us these are the professional volleyball from here everywhere around the united states and listen this excitement this growth that they are bringing they're bringing where everybody wants to be a part of the supernovas check them out at omahasupernovas.com and join the fun jd man yeah incredible from high school he's a local former neb prep yes sir west side yes sir let's talk about where your sports love on the the directing side came from because most people want to be in the sport. Most people want to take a part of the sport and, and be in the action. But you decided with West Side Wired to join that part and be able to broadcast and, and talk about sports. What drove your interest there to get out of sports and to get into that? Yeah, part of it? The, the honest answer there is lack of athleticism. Okay. You know, I love basketball. I loved my playing days. I played basketball for a long time, but I couldn't run with the big cats in the high school level, but I still wanted to be involved. As you mentioned, I still wanted a piece of that. I love sports in general, right? Who doesn't? That's, yes, that's <laughs> there are, there are people on. out there that don't, I don't know how they live, but <laughs> um, no. So I, I wanted to be able to find a way to still be involved without having to be athletic or sweat it out every day in front of thousands of people. Um, and so, yeah, so I kind of got more into broadcasting and writing through Westside Wired, which is just a great program. Westside always, they, they fund it so well um, and are so supportive of their student journalists over there. Um, and so I was really, I started as a writer. I was big into writing and putting words onto the paper. And as I've grown older, I found that it's not, that's not necessarily my forte. I prefer to talk. I'm a yapper, as the kids would say. <laughs> I learned that term the other day, yapper. Um, and so, yeah, so then I was kind of given, they basically out West side, my first game I ever did was a West side prep game, which is like one of the biggest games it's, you can get around yeah. here. Right. Like so incredibly blessed. Um, and they just handed me the equipment. They said, figure it out. We haven't used this in a couple of years, but you can figure it out. And I did. And that's just kind of what I took with it and ran with it. And that game obviously wasn't a very good one. Right. I, I go back and listen to it from time to time. <laughs> my first time doing it. Oh, and he's got the ball. <laughs> the pause yeah the pause is the, intentional um, there yeah intentional <laughs> derek you think back to your high school obviously you're both are in college you're at iowa western he's at drake what do you remember of your days in, in high school and how you started a role to think that this was what you wanted to do yeah well really in high school we didn't have the opportunity for like uh to be able to do play-by-play -play or anything in high school so really my freshman year in college at carney uh, that's what gave me the platform to try out play by play and stuff. But I always knew I had the love for sports and I just love talking about it, you know, like professional yapper. Yeah. Really, like the kids say, but yeah. And that's the bad part that some people don't understand when you look at the local, cause you both are both former Nebraska preps. Mm -hmm. You went to Northwest, right? Right. Omaha, Northwest. And, and West side, people don't understand that the stigma is real. It isn't something you can hide. It isn't the availability of what you can do is a luxury and some people take for granted. Some people don't understand, man, this school over here really doesn't have that support. So when you sit here and you think of everything that you were blessed with, when it came to West side and you hear of like Omaha Northwest, how does that make you realize, man, we've got to help these schools get to where people can live these dreams and, and these wants and be able to get outside of their box. Because I think that's what, 
for you, because I remember when I first met you, for those that don't know, I met him a long time ago when he was a young kid because uh, of my daughter. But you weren't very talkative at the early time. You were you were you were your, yourself. And now all of a sudden you're the Mr. Chatter that everybody talks about. Yeah. And I think I think that comes with the mic in front of me. I'm definitely still a more kind of reserved person. Um, but you put me in a situation like this or a situation where I can just throw on a headset. It just transforms me into a different world. Absolutely. Um but as far as lack of resources or how to kind of work around that, I mean, just make connections, meet more people, do what you can to make it happen. Um, when I first got to Drake, it's obviously very competitive. It's D1 basketball. Everyone wants to call D1 basketball. So I had to find other ways to go do it, right? I found a local high school hockey club in Des Moines and I did their home games for like half a season just to keep getting that experience, right? And so um, obviously at Westside, I was incredibly, incredibly blessed to be able to do it and have the resources there. But I also just know that in this media, in the media world in general, right, generalizing, you just have to be able to uh, to make those connections and to, to find a way to do it, even if it's not going to be handed to you, right? Um, and so, yeah, I, I, there's a lot of opportunity out there, I think is, is the best way to put it. And you just got to go and find it. See, and that's what I like is, is uh, Derek and I met a couple weeks ago and it just, you know, he was like, man, I noticed you because I did esports. Esports to me is huge for this reason. Most parents don't understand how important that just because your kid plays video games doesn't mean his opportunities are not there. He plays video games. He's not only getting an education in sports media. He's not only getting to do radio for Iowa Western, one of the best local uh, uh, NAI or um, JUCO yeah. JUCO colleges out there. But then he's also getting to play esports. He's getting to enjoy the things that he loves, and like that's why it was so important. So I covered Iowa Western. We did a few events. He and he and I saw him at the phone place, and he goes, "Dude, this just means something." I was like something's telling me you, if you need an internship let's roll what do you like so we go do the first one it's west side speaking of west side right. there you go First, brian <laughs> and we go there and just uh just getting the interaction and, and i start introducing to people because like you said every connection matters you never know when down the line that person's gonna be someone that you go man that's someone, I mean, Ross Jernstrom is always around West side. He met Damon Benning and, you know, and, and he's a part of her at sports. And it's just like those connections still grow. When you think back to high school, what was your most important connection to go? This is what I wanted. Oh, goodness. I mean, you're obviously a big one. Look where I'm at right now. <laughs> uh, knowing you and, and that was in a different way. I didn't necessarily meet you professionally, but I always no. kept it, kept in contact because, you know, and one day this could, be a dream and here we are so um but yeah um people at heard up mike sodder was a huge one i worked very closely with him for a lot of time uh in high school um he's a great guy great guy to work with has so many connections as well um yeah ross jernstrom as you mentioned always around west side a really good person to get to know um especially back in the day when i wanted to go into local tv i think i'm probably more radio audio oriented now but i tried the tv thing for a little bit and ross was great um but yeah, there's just so many people it, everywhere. Um, D DB, Damon Benning, obviously, I know a little bit just from being around Westside. His kids go to Westside. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I, I probably can't pinpoint one that's been like the most instrumental, but it's just there's they're always around. And especially that's what's great about Nebraska, right, is we rally around sports in so many different ways. And so there's always going to be someone at at an event, even at Northwest, I went to my older brother played varsity for Westside way back in the day. And, uh, I think I met, um, Houston Alexander at, right. <laughs> uh, at a Northwest game and which was just like the most random encounter of my life, but that's a connection I made and he's in radio elsewhere. And I, I found, you know, I ended up at an internship uh, with him in high school as well. So it's just like those little connections and they're everywhere. And that's, what's so great about Nebraska is that the sports, especially in high school can, can bring everyone together like that. Derek, speaking of high school, do what was the thing that said, I want to go to college and do it? Was there anything around that made you kind of feel like that was what you wanted to go towards? Uh, Well, I mean, I just, I kind of always wanted to go to college, be the first one to like kind of graduate out of my household or immediate yeah. family. So that was always a goal of mine. And then uh, I just knew in order like to do play by play or color, any kind of commentating, yeah, there's always a lot of competition, so college is always going to help you compete against those other people, especially when you have former athletes you're going against. And, you know, I'm not an athlete, but so, <laughs> so 
I just wanted to, you know, be able to learn the skill and uh, gain connections, network. And yeah, networking, I would also say is probably the most important thing in this business to try to move up for sure. Now, when you were doing it in high school, JD, was there any anything that you had to miss because you really knew that your goal was for the sports? And I say that because I always ask all the athletes, but I think it's just as poor, as important for the people that cover it. Because there's a lot of things that people don't understand the time away from family that it takes to be a good person that does the coverage for the sports. Whether it is, I mean, shoot, I'm, I, I've been to basketball, I've covered softball, I've covered wrestling, I've covered, you know, everything that I've been at. But that's still a lot of time, a lot of impact. What what do you think you you dealt with when you were growing through that? Maybe you might have missed something in high school. Yeah. And well, heck, this weekend, there's an event at Drake that I'm going to have to miss, especially if Drake wins tonight, because I'll be here instead of in Des Moines. So it's still going. And I definitely feel that um, because really in sports media, you are on the you are on the timetable of the sport of the event itself. And oftentimes that's weekends, that's nights, that's not the traditional schedule. So there's definitely stuff I've had to miss out on. Um, in high school, I think the biggest thing I remember being maybe upset, not upset, like obviously I get to do this, very grateful for that. But if I could have gone back, I probably would have gone to winter formal um, the, my junior year. Um, especially one, because I ended up not getting one in my senior year. I didn't know that that wasn't going to happen, obviously. For sure. But I, you know, that ended up being a dance that I had to miss. And I ended up only getting to go to two out of the four that I could have gone to. Um, so that's like a big one, especially with basketball, because you're going in, in basketball in the high school ranks. You're generally your team is playing Friday, Saturday. So you're missing not just one weekend night, but you're missing both, both. weekend nights, especially if your team doesn't play earlier in this, on in the Saturday. Um, and so it was a lot of things like that. Like I'm choosing to work. I'm choosing to continue to, to, to grind on this versus going out versus uh, doing things with friends, things like that. Just, it, but it's, it's, it's a bunch of little things that you have to miss, but they add up as you were saying. Absolutely. When you think of, of, like you said, the formal dance. And, and I think, I think you brought up a good part of it. 2020 yeah, COVID year. Yeah. What do you remember of that? just that whole transition and everything that was going on during that process. Did you already have Drake chosen as your college? No. So I did a year of Metro. So yeah. I, I knew that I was going to do that. Um, a, a year of Metro, regardless of where I had ended up. Um, so the Juco route definitely been there. Definitely understand that. Um, and so I, I didn't necessarily have Drake picked, but I, I had in the back of my mind, it's kind of where I wanted to end up um, and where I did end up, obviously. Um, but that, yeah, that transition was a little crazy because Nebraska ended up still putting on the state tournament that year. So like being one of the people, the few people that was like on the list to be able to get into those games and Westside played prep, but it wasn't the traditional <laughs> Westside prep game. There were 50 people there. You know what I mean? It was the weirdest thing I've ever experienced. The student section, life. not what it, what it, yeah, it no, normally is. Definitely. And, and one, you already know that you're lucky to even get that. Yeah. And I, I think sometimes one of the biggest things that people don't go back and reflect of everything that changed on one day, I mean, I remember what Creighton was playing in the in the tournament, and all of a sudden, yeah, yep, right yeah, after half that time. halftime and the done. Big East, yeah, the Big East tournament, the yeah. Big East tournament, yeah. and then you're like, okay, this is weird. This this can't be real, right? Do you remember anything from that that year of 2020 when all that stuff started going down? Well, um, me at the time, I was just working a job, you know, and then I worked at actually TD Ameritrade, and they just sent us home you know, in the middle of the day and they were like, we'll call you when we need you. And then, you know, some places never called back, you know? So it was definitely a strange thing to see everybody closing down and all the sports. Yeah. Just seeing like, yeah, I was watching that Creighton game, you know, St. John's versus Creighton. And then in the halftime, this was, you know, it's supposed to be a big year for Creighton too. And it's just, the end of the season right there is great. Well, and, yeah. and weren't they struggling in that game too at, at the beginning? They yeah, were struggling. Uh, they just had uh, Marcus Zagorowski get hurt that year yes. right before the tournament. Yes. So, um, yeah, Tyler Clement was in there having a game. It's kind of a, like a legendary thing with Creighton fans. but It's crazy to talk about or to think about because 10 days before that, they're playing in front of a sold-out crowd on senior day, and they're dropping a banner for the first regular season Big East championship. Right. It was shared with Seton Hall that year, but they won it, and they dropped a banner. And there's 17,000 people there losing their minds. And 10 days later, it's gone. It's yeah, I was out. at that game. That yeah. was a crazy game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you guys look at back at 2020 and you think to where we are now and you just think of just even the social media spot. I mean, people were at that time and I could say, it. you know, I started a radio show when COVID happened and we still had to come up with stuff 
every night. We, we ran four to five nights a, uh, a week and we had to come up with stuff. We had to make up stuff. We had to find other things. I mean, I remember we, we brought up uh, QB one and we ended up talking to uh, a, a, one of the players off of there. I remember we were talking about um, what was that show on the, um, the Juco football where they uh, down in Mississippi State. last chance, oh, you. Last yeah, chance yeah. you we brought in uh, we were like reviewing that once a week we were watching an episode because I never seen it so we were watching one episode and then we brought on uh, the teacher because of course she was all done with it and, and we brought her on the show over phone of course and just like you were like trying to reach out and grab so the thing that you loved at that time was sports broadcasting but it was no longer the same. Yeah. People were doing it from their home to call a game or the office. Of course, I remember we set up the lunch room or where we would have a meeting. That was where if there was a UNO game, Gary Sharp would call it in there. Or if there was a Creighton game, that's where uh, John Bishop would call. They'd have it in that lunchroom area instead of in the, in the office because they had to have a TV. They had to pretty much call it a little more delayed. I mean, they're already delayed. Right. And it was just crazy how the sports world turned and you go to no fans. Mm. Fake crowd noise. I was going to say, for, think of that when it came to the state basketball. I just went through two weeks of state basketball. He's going through the video because, I mean, I did, dude, I was like, there's a lot of good here. Yeah, yeah. The crowds were crazy, especially for Class C. Like, Class C almost had just as much of a Class A and Class B. And I'm like, this is awesome. This is what this sport's about. Think of when you were in that gym down there at Pinnacle. And pin drop. Prep and Westside are playing, and it's like a fairly close game, and you could hear a pin drop in the third quarter. Because the like, momentum, how, how, nothing can change yeah, yeah. because of the way the crowd reacts. Yeah, exactly. And they just got to go out there and play raw basketball. And it, you know, talking to the players, I think I remember Reggie Thomas or someone saying that it just felt like a shoot around. Like it just felt like a they were just, quick pickup game. Yeah, exactly. Because parents obviously had to title. have six feet in between them. Yeah, couldn't, you couldn't sit next to people. Yep. So I can only imagine the spread out game. Yeah. And then, like you said, you had to be on a list as a student mm -hmm. to even be in attendance. Yep. yep. Compared to now, I mean, there. I know. I know Concordia closed both Thursday and Friday so they could go out there to the game. Mm -hmm. That's what C one class schools do. They go. We have no school because we're all going. Or, right. or, or you better tell us why you ain't going. And that's what I love about the game of basketball. But that's how important sports is yeah. to this community. Yeah. And that's how important sports is across the world. And when you think of that drop of everything's done, did you think that we would ever get back to where you are today? You had hope, right? You wanted to get back to where we are. There are certainly points where I was like, God, the world is ending. Like it's over. We're done. There's not nothing. It's never going to happen again. Um, but you had hope and, and, a lot of during that COVID time, I think one of the more underrated pieces was network was like replay old games and you could relive, you know, you knew the result, but you could relive what a game was like when there was a crowd there and things like that. And so you had hope that we would be back at, at this point eventually. Um, and, you know, it, obviously they kind of eased back into it and eventually got there. But yeah, there were definitely days where it was like, man, are we ever is the passion ever going to be there, right? Did this just suck the life out of sports? Are sports going to change? How are sports going to change? Is that connection that these communities built that you were talking about, is that going to go to shambles? And it didn't. You know, we got very fortunate that it was just a little setback. We got back here, and 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 I think, it, if anything, people take it for granted way less than they ever did before. Um, and people show out way more than they ever did before. Um, and so if, if there is an advantage, I think it's that, but yeah, it, it definitely was like a roller coaster of like, oh man, we're going to get there and it's going to be awesome when we do but, Oh crud, this may never happen. So to Derek, answer your question a long way, <laughs> it's all good. That's what we're here for. Derek, you get to go to Carney and you're into the sports media. What is that first, like just even getting to the college and then knowing what you want to do and how does the conversation, the reason I say that is because of course you never know. If we have someone that is into sports media, that's like, man, I just don't know how to make that first connection. Because I think once you make one connection, the dominoes just keep rolling and rolling if you continue to work hard. Yeah, well, when I first even went into college, I wasn't expecting to be able to do much or have much opportunity. But the nice thing about going to like, you know, not the biggest school, but a still, you know, a pretty relevant school like Kearney is I was still able to get the opportunity to you know, my first freshman year, be able to call games, call basketball games, 
um, called the girls basketball games. And BJ now was that through your teacher court. or did you have to make the connection with the sport before you could have the opportunity? That was just through the, the class, like the teacher set us up and we all got the opportunity to call certain games and stuff. And then also uh, like they even gave us uh, once a week, a group of people would get to get like 45 minutes on the, the local radio and in car in a city like Kearney, you know, everybody's listening to those games. Those, you know, yes, it's kind co- it's like a college s- city. So AM is still everybody. a thing. Yeah, it's still a thing. I mean, I, I, I don't have to lie, man. I hear John Bishop and, and, you know, no matter who he's Creighton, that is who right. I stick to Creighton. If I, if I want to watch a game of Creighton, there's only a couple Nick balls, another one, of yeah. course. I mean, I'll gladly listen anytime he's calling it, but, now them two are also working on the radio together. You have Nick Baugh and, and and just the atmosphere that you could set on AM radio if you have listened to AM radio is just, it's mind-blowing because I'm sitting there driving and I'm picturing everything that you're explaining. What do you remember of your first call in college? Um. Well, you know, I there was a popular slogan at the time, so... Luckily, it worked out with the world word uh, dunk. So I said, you can't spell dunk without U and K. So that <laughs> gave me a little, you know, <laughs> a little signature saying right away. Yeah. So that kind of made it easy for me to feel comfortable. I remember, you know, dressing to the attire. Like I went there in a, like, you know, business outfit. And my teacher even said, like, the other coaches appreciated that. I took it seriously. And that was another thing that I could hang my hat on that. I was, you know, really taking it seriously and giving it my all while I could there, basically. Dude, that's a great example too, for others to listen. I mean, there's a reason that things go the way they go. You go to Metro first. What yeah. was that for? Was that for your, to get your um, prereqs done? Yeah. Was it to much. kind of set yourself up for success to go? Okay. Because like you said, you're kind of in your own shell. Mm-hmm. You got out a little bit with sports, but besides sports, it's not like you're like looking for all the action. You're trying to find it. It's what's coming. What was that like to be able to know that, okay, I can go to Metro, step up my game after Metro, but I know I, this is my stepping stone. Yeah, especially during that COVID year, I think kind of helped with that. I didn't feel like I was missing out on a ton because like university, now that I'm at Drake and hearing all the stories that people had from the year that year that I did at Metro versus like going to a school like Drake, I don't feel like I missed out on much. So that kind of worked out um, pretty well. But yeah, I, I left broadcasting to the side for a year and I just kind of went to Zoom University, Zoom Community College um, and went to classes once a week or whatever and just kind of did my thing, got through that year and then ended up transferring. But um, yeah, that was a totally different experience than anything I've, I've ever experienced, both academically and socially. Absolutely. So of course, I always talk to athletes about the recruitment process, yours is different going Mm -hmm. from where you're going to Drake. What makes you think Drake is the college that you want to go and how do you get to that decision? What what was there other colleges that were options? What was that like? Yeah. So I definitely looked hard at Lincoln. I toured Lincoln and Drake the same amount of times. It's probably six or seven times each. Like I was, it was a hard decision for me. Um, And so there was actually a little bit of recruiting in high school. There's a summer camp that Drake runs. So one of the Drake professors that's now become, he's like my advisor at Drake now. So full circle moment there, but he came to Westside and was like, Hey, just come look. Just come experience the university. Let us show you what we have to offer. Um, it, it's not like recruiting in athletics, but it was similar. You know, just, hey, just if come give us a shot. you to come and, and, and you're not on the athletic side. Yeah. I, that, that still feels a little formal. It feels a little bit like, okay. It makes this, you feel wanted. Yeah. This guy wants to take this opportunity yeah. to offer that. To yeah. Me. Yeah. So, so, uh, I, I just like Drake because of how small it was, right? Like Lincoln is this, and t- the campus itself is a city with inside Link, uh, with inside Lincoln in general, and it just it's just it was too big. I couldn't do the class size. I couldn't do um, that. And then I also just knew that the opportunity that I was going to have at Drake was going to be right right away. I'm going to get a foot in the door. I'm going to be able to do it right away, um, no matter what that is. And and that is, I made that connection in with uh, the the Des Moines Capitals and did hockey games there, and that was through a Drake connection. And um, I, I just felt it just felt like home, right? Stepping on campus just felt like home, and it still does. I'm I'm very bittersweet about graduating here in a couple months because because um, it, it it is home to me, um, and it's it's been so great. But yeah, that that was a, one of the hardest decisions I probably will ever have to make in my life. Well, you got to think. I mean, 
yes, it's just like even in sports, everybody wants to go to Nebraska, right? If that's if that's mm-hmm. part of your culture. But think of how many people are there for that. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, I mean, I know myself. The odds of trying to get a pass, a media pass, is slim to none because there's so much coverage. Does it make it a little more personal because the hype and the coverage isn't as as broad? as it is for Nebraska. Yeah, I'm one-on-one every day, almost every day with the athletes, with Darren DeVries, the head coach, um, and Allison Pullman, the, the women's head coach. I got their numbers on speed dial. And I, like, I have that connection because Drake doesn't move the needle as much in, in or at, according to the local media. They would rather cover Iowa, Iowa State, the bigger schools. And so that gives me that opportunity to really establish that connection and with hard work, be that guy that those coaches and players want to talk to and want to interact with. Um, And so, yeah, that's definitely absolutely has been an advantage for me. Um, And, you know, it's the little saying that I kind of repeat in my head is just be the guy that shows up, be the guy that shows up and no, no, even if you're in a bigger pond, right. You're a smaller fish in a bigger pond, like at Nebraska, just being that face that they recognize because you're there for everything you, you want to be there. You show that, that willingness They'll, they'll, they'll recognize you eventually. I know Greg McDermott is great at, with that at Creighton. Creighton gets a good amount of media coverage, but he, he recognizes pretty much every single reporter in that room because they have put in the work to be there and make themselves recognizable. And so I, I definitely think it's doable everywhere. Uh, it was just probably was a little easier for me to get in that door because I'm the one consistent like reporter that they have at their, at their events. It's a benefit to be that consistent is a benefit to know where, how you can consistently grow in that in that aspect. Now, of course, Derek, for you, your trip changed. It didn't work out in Carney, and things happen. What makes you decide on Iowa Western? How do you even make that connection there? Because you still obviously have had this goal. I want to be the first one in the family to graduate from college. Right. Well, I kind of always knew Iowa Western was there. Originally, when I was first supposed to visit campuses, actually, funny story, I was supposed to visit Iowa Western, but like my parents took the wrong way and we got lost. So <laughs> kind of <laughs> missed out on fate, maybe, you know, yeah. like my immediately after high school. So I just went back and I looked at it and I like the environment, you know, because it's a JUCO. So it, it has the feel of a real like college campus, you know, kind of university style. But it also is small enough to get everybody, you know enough attention and be able to build connections with the teachers and have opportunities like that. So when I came back, I just really loved it. And I was more mature, obviously. So I was able to stick around and, you know, I think that's important to say, because you're going through the hardest part of your life. I would say probably from deciding what college you're going to go to and finishing college is probably your hardest time for someone like myself who didn't do any college. Uh, unfortunately, I went right to family, kids, which I'm almost done. My last one is graduating this year. Woo! Yeah. But anyways, but like that transition time of going, OK, I am mature enough. No, I'm not. And then you get pushed back and you could have quit. You could have easily quit. What was the thing that made you go? Iowa Western's where I want to go and I'm going to finish at Iowa Western. Well, I just knew that I love sports, so I was going to dedicate it because no matter what the job was, how much I got paid. I knew I was going to be happy just covering sports. And that's just something that at the end of the day, I could always be happy that I'm in that field. And I wouldn't feel like I sold myself short because I, I don't feel like I would get tired of that. And that just kind of made it easy for me. That's a huge statement too, for a young, young man or young woman to make, because it's just like, even with sports, just because you play a sport doesn't mean you're getting paid right away. Mm-hmm baseball players i mean unless you're in the top 20 like we just had kel fountain on last last year or last week he's in the top 20 that's a rare breed right but i mean you got Cade povich who has worked his way from community college savannah bananas because it was covid time comes up to nebraska pitches for nebraska goes and has to go through the whole triple a and now might get an opportunity later this year but people don't understand all these times that these Athletes, reporters have to go, man, I can make choices. I can go to, into the working class and go make some money, or I can enjoy what I do. JD, talk on that, on, on where you're at on your part. Obviously, you're getting ready to graduate, but you've had some years of, man, well, look at the money side of it. You can be honest about it, and you could say, I know 
money can't buy this happiness that I'm experiencing. Yeah. I think if, if you're all about the destination, it's not worth it. I think it is my biggest mantra, right? It's about the journey to get there, as you were just kind of explaining all of it with K. K Povich's situation. And um, I, I, it's not about the money. And, and especially being a journalism major and being in broadcast, like it's not about me. I'm not here. I'm here talking about me, but I'm not the beneficiary of it. It's everyone else that gets to learn and get to take a little insight into this. As a journalist, it's about who's taking in that information, who's reading those facts and getting something out of it. Um, as a as a writer, it's, you know, who's reading it and who gets to, as a broadcaster, it's who gets to picture that. Obviously I can see it, but how can I make it so that I can share that with everybody else? Um, as you were mentioning with, with J John Bishop. And so, um, I just think that that's like the biggest thing, right? Like, it's not about the money. I, if I was in it for the money, I'd go to law school or like be a doctor or something, but I'm here because I can enjoy this. Like you said, like I'm into sports and I know that I'm going to enjoy this and I'm going to, be able to help other people enjoy this thing that I love as well. Um, and, and so it, you know, money is a thing. Like, obviously you need money and right. you're going to find, I, but I'll find a way to, to deal with that um, when that time comes and, and, you know, making this climb and getting to the point where I'm at, it's never been about that. So now choosing a sport. Yeah. How do you get down to that? Cause so me, Sometimes I don't know, maybe I'm selling myself short. And of course, my biggest thing is promoting the high school kids, no matter what they are, because I think sometimes there are certain high school kids that get everything promoted mm -hmm. and some that we have some hidden talent. I mean, like Will Kyle, he was unfortunately under some strong names, Chucky Hepburn and them where he's behind the eight ball. Mm -hmm. But now all of a sudden he's the limelight for the summit league. He's the limelight for South Dakota state. And it's like, I covered him before it was a limelight for him because you see the talent, you see what is there. How do you decide on the sport and how do you know if maybe I can give a little bit more, a little bit less? Yeah. I think that's always been a big thing too. Like I, I remember in high school walking up to my editor and being like, Hey, can I go to the softball game today? And just like tweet it on the wired account. And they're like, well, no one really like cares about softball. I'm like, I care about softball. Their parents cared about softball. The, yes. the players care enough to step out onto the field. Right. And so let's shed a little light. I have the resources to do that. Uh, we have the resources to do that. There's really no reason you should be saying no to this. So um, I just think that, yeah, it, they one, they all deserve it, um, as you mentioned. Um, as, as far as broadcasting goes, though, I think there is a line because like for me, I don't understand football. Like I am happy to admit I love it as a fan. Football is a great sport, but I could never come anywhere near a coach's box. I have. I just don't understand. There's too many moving 22 people on one field at a time is too much. I can't do it. <laughs> Give me 10. Give me 10 coach. <laughs> and, uh, and so I prefer basketball because I have, only have to watch five people. You can really watch the ball and notice most of it. Um, and as a broadcaster, kind of be able to follow the ball, whereas football, you got to re, you know, where all the receivers are and where, how the line, the line is lined up. And just like, there's so many more moving parts and I'm just like better with basketball. So in terms of like coverage in general, like, yes, if I even remotely understand the sport on there, I wrote a story on the Creighton rugby team in high school, like for my, my personal blog. That you I know, I've interviewed a professional rugby player Have from me? Omaha South. There yeah. you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like that stuff's important to yeah. me. Like people have no idea. Like you don't have to just play basketball, football, baseball. There is so much out there. I interviewed a, a 14 or now he's 16, but he's a, a freaking uh, stock car racer. Out oh, of awesome. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. These That's people, big in some communities exactly. around here. Yeah. And he's competing against 30, 40 year olds that have been doing it since Christ was a child. Right. <laughs> and he's out there showing them up and you're like, but no one knows. But then once people see it, they're like, man, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's right. pretty cool. Yeah. Derek, what, it, what, what is there a sport that you're looking to do? What was the thing that, that you really like between the two colleges that you've done as far as the broadcasting? Cause I like his point. It, it, you can know, I mean, I, I, Three sports are mine. That That's just me. I can do all three, but I can understand if you haven't followed football long enough to know all the ins and outs. Is that a cover two zone? Is that a cover right. two press? Yeah, I could not. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I agree and appreciate what he said about, like, everybody deserves coverage, you know. Like, there's always a value to everything. And I believe in, you know, sometimes uh, just getting in, you might cover something that you don't be in preference. So you can learn a new sport. I like volleyball, like soccer, basketball. Those are probably my top three, I would say. But 
you know, I also enjoy watching football and I would be willing to learn a lot of stuff just to, you know, because I love sports at the end of the day. I kind of love the stories inside of sports. It doesn't really matter what sports because it, it all kind of has the same, you know, feeling to it to me. I like that. Well, I so I'm a, a guy who respects the art, right? I respect the time. I respect that. What is it to you guys who are in college? If you see, because nowadays it is so easy for someone like myself, I didn't go to any college. Um, I got a radio show. I ended up turning into a podcast. I've, you know, I've had the opportunities. I mean, interview of the beef, you know, stuff like that. Does that hurt or affect the thoughts of what you've had to go through at college when you see that that opportunity is out there without it? I'll well, start with you, Derek. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah. Well, um, it it has both. There's both sides of it because there is a side of if you just you know you learn the like maybe like Adobe Premiere stuff for yourself. You know you can learn how to edit. You can do it by yourself, but also you know always going to college is kind of kind of going to give you that head start. I would feel like. Okay. What about you, JD? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I just think that everybody's path is different. Everybody, something works for everybody. Um, college isn't worth it if you're not as like a, you don't enjoy being a student. Right. Like if you're spending money to sit there and dread your life while some guy, old guy is trying to tell you about Premiere when he doesn't even know how to use it. Like, yeah, like that can that can be crappy sometimes. Um, for me, I've always loved being a student. I've always gotten good grades. I've you know, and so college was a no doubter for me because I love to learn in that way. I'm not a self teacher. You know, I need to have somebody watching over me and helping me through this these processes while I learn. Um, and so, yeah, there's as you mentioned, there's you could go on either path, and and there's a path for everybody, and everybody is gonna if you if you have the will to find find what you want, you're gonna find it, right? Like there is a way to, to put in that hard work to be around and to get to that final destination. Uh, but the the journey isn't it's different for everybody. That also makes me think that. Even if you're, you know, you could start on one path and maybe you'll find another path at the time because it's easier, like for people like me that have kind of, you know, college didn't go their way the first time. You can kind of go back in or even learn yourself and just find another route on, you know. I like that. Always. Yeah, it's not going to be A, B, C. There yeah. could be a big I in the middle of that where you thought of I came before B myself right. you know um and that's just that I, th I think for myself you know i've always whether it's dj and whether it's a lawn whether it's what i do now with with this i think it's the respect that i've put on it before i i jumped into it you know i respect the people that are doing it and have done it or the people that have the experience but i also fiend off of their experience you know i'm like you know that's the stuff that makes it even even better. Like I said, I I look at those um, commentators and I go, gosh, if I could just do one segment even close to that engaging, then I'm learning from them because that's what it's all about. You think of your biggest thing so far in your college part at Drake. What's the biggest thing that you've learned for the media side that you're like, I don't think someone can learn this outside of here. Mm, is there anything at drake specifically it could be drake it, it could be even even before drake any mm, of it man that i that i had to be at drake or at west side to learn that um no because i think a lot of it is just through the connections that i've made right and um one of the well i don't can't remember who told me it but basically i you know coming up as a writer they were like you can't a good way to become the best is to read the best, right? And that's the same with broadcasting. The, the, a good way to become a better broadcaster is to listen to the best broadcasters out there, the Kevin Coolers of the world, yeah. the, the John Bishops and, and things of that nature. Um, and so I, I don't know that there's one thing that I'm like, man, if I would have went to Lincoln instead of Drake, like I wouldn't have learned that or whatever. I probably just, I probably would have gotten there just in a different way. Um, so, so I don't know if I have a straight answer to your question. There. No, Sorry, like, a, I'm not no, trying to dance no, around it. You but. don't have to dance around because that's what I like about it is because you, you're acknowledging that it's universal, but you're acknowledging one of the biggest things that they told you because it resorts back to someone like myself yeah. who had no college but still looks at the same factor of you want to be the best, you got to follow what the best do. Mm -hmm. Writing for you, of mm -hmm. course, it was your biggest thing. 
that's not where technology is nowadays. Yeah. And you look at Definitely. newspapers, you look at all that stuff. How does that change your road to where you want to be or what you were wanting to be prior to all this biggest change in the social media world? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and I think I kind of alluded to it earlier, but I went from like writing and doing everything that I would do in writing and kind of incorporate that into a spoken word, into a, a video component, things like that. So everything that I would have put on paper in words is now coming out of my mouth is kind of essentially how I would how I would put it that but way. But does it make it harder to feel like you can get to the end goal of whatever your end goal is? I don't think I have an end goal. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think my end goal is to constantly be chasing. Because, of course, like newspapers, almost obsolete. Mm -hmm. Was that part of your route? Did you think you could possibly do a yeah. sports section? I mean, as a kid, it was sitting at the table and reading the, the sports section in the World Herald, reading guys like Sam McEwen and being like, I'm going to be that one day. Like, that's <laughs> going to be me. And that's unfortunately not how it's working out. But I also said that about Kevin Kugler and like the shows that are on that station and things of that nature. So, um, and now I'm kind of going down more of a path like that. So yeah, it definitely has changed like the trajectory. Um, I think it's definitely why when I came to Drake, I kind of made that pivotal decision. It's like, okay, I'm going to be super heavily involved with broadcasting, which is what I ended up doing, or I'm going to be super heavily involved with the times Delphic, which is the student newspaper. And like, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into writing. I'm going to make it work. I'm going to find a way. And I just chose, I, I became more of a yapper than a writer as we were talking about earlier, full circle moment there. But uh, yeah, so it, but it definitely does change things, right? You're all, you are constantly worried. I say, I can say as many times as I want, it's not about the money, but it, eventually like, yeah, that's something that's going to play a factor. And in, in theory, there's just not going to be a way to make money writing in 10 years. So for you in social media, videos, audio, and all that, what made you make sure that was what you wanted to go to when you did the college? Well, I just, when I was at Iowa Western, I just learned all the kind of different skills through Adobe and stuff and kind of figured out what my specialty was. And I just, I've always liked play-by-play. -play. I always like to talk about it, you know, just like you were saying, just talking about sports that always came easy to me. And then I, when I was learning videography, I learned to appreciate the, that, part of sports, you know, just being able to capture the moment. And in both of those, I really feel like you can share the joy of sports with fans. And that's what is the most important to me is just kind of sharing what I love at the end of the day. See, and I, I think that's a good point that you brought up. If you guys think about it, you know, because now you're doing more of the broadcasts and we're doing more of the sharing what we're seeing, right? Mm -hmm. As far as the social media posts, whatever. And obviously you had to do it for the Drake game, you know, for uh, the NCAA. But when I think about it, there's stuff that I miss because I am so locked into I'm trying to capture this and then share it real quick. How do you how do you think technology will slowly help that situation so you can enjoy the game? Because, yeah. I went to a lot of games, but I missed a lot of moments because I'm like, oh, that's a moment. I'm going to go ahead and text it out. I'm going to go ahead and get it out. Oh, there's a dunk. And I just missed the dunk. Nothing worse. Do you think there's anything that should be coming out to help with that situation? Because I think it's cool to report these things. Now, he's calling every situation, so he's getting to stay in that moment. But for us, we have to pick and choose sometimes unless you're, I think, teamed up with people and you have like a, a squad. OK, I'm going to send this picture to you. Right. And I think just for the foreseeable future, that's just going to have to be it's just going to be a team effort just because, you know, I mean, the TV providers already got the live stream. So there's not really a good way unless you can live react. That's probably the only other spin okay. on it. But um all right, maybe a little live reaction. And everything, it's almost impossible when you're sending out tweets and Instagram posts. You know, it's so much work that goes into it that people don't know behind the scenes. So, yeah. And I think that's a good point because a lot of times people joke with me. They're like, in a joking manner, but they're like, oh, look, you're getting paid to watch sports. And it's like, yeah, I'm watching sports, but I'm not necessarily enjoying them in the sense that you guys like. <laughs> would think of when you just go to a game as a fan, right? Like I am working, I am missing things. And so that's just like a really interesting point. Something that crossed my mind. Well, when you think about the NCAA tournament last week and you get to come back home, when do you remember that first idea to go, okay, Omaha, did you, did you think that was a possibility before selection Sunday? Was it something you already talked to family about? Hey, I'm going to get to come home. There's a chance. There's a chance. What was that moment like for you? Because we'll just get through the whole, I mean, just being in that environment. 
Yeah. So what's nice about Drake being in the Missouri Valley is that they got the auto bid a week before Selection Sunday. So there was a full seven days between, okay, we know Drake is definitely in the tournament and the bracket coming out versus like playing playing that tournament when most conferences do. And then they're also in the Valley, so you can't guarantee a bid if you don't win the tournament. So, so what's nice about Arch Madness being a week before is that then that entire week can be spent speculating. And there were a lot of bracketologists out there. And there's a lot of people that do it for fun. And there's a lot of people like a Joe Lenardi that get paid and are, you know, more ex experts in it. But there were a lot of brackets that had him sending, sending them to Omaha. So the first time, a couple times I was saw it, I was like, oh, that'd be cool. Like, you know, that'd be, that'd be fun, whatever. And then the more I saw it, the more I was like, okay, they're seeming to think this is actually a thing, you know? And, um, and so taking that time and every time, it hit just a little bit more. And then I was actually driving back. I was in the quad cities for the women's basketball championship on, on selection Sunday. And I was driving back and I had to pull over to watch the first part of the selection show just to see where Drake got sent. Cause I was like, if I get a text, I'm going to like, I'm going to go off the road. <laughs> if I get a text that they're going to Omaha. So I like had, to, I was at, sitting in the world's largest truck stop there on I 80 uh, eastbound headed or westbound headed for, uh, for Des Moines from the quad cities. And, and they said, Omaha, and I mean, that was like the greatest moment, right? Like this is everything that I have ever dreamed of coming together in, in, in one thing. And I don't, it, um, it didn't hit me until the day of the game for sure, but it, it's just been, it's been crazy and, uh, super, super grateful to be here and, you know, growing up a season ticket holder at Creighton growing up. So, you know, lived in the CHI or quest center or whatever you want to call it. Uh, <laughs> I think it was central league there for a little bit. Um, and, and so to be, to be able to sit court side of the game was something that I'll never, ever, 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 ever forget. And, and so then on your aspect, what all tasks did they have you doing? Because of like, I, I, I believe you've told me before for this tournament, NCAA doesn't allow students to do what you have done at the college level. Yeah. Yep. So broadcast rights are a whole thing with the NCAA because, you know, it's all about money with them. So um, I can't, I, came as an uh, assistant SID, which is like a, basically a PR person. So um, running socials, posting pictures, um, writing stuff for the website, those previews and recaps you see on the website, keeping game notes uh, to have for, for the broadcast, um, especially, uh, you know, just going, going forward. And so, um, yeah, all that stuff. Right. And so it, it did go from, it was interesting that you're talking about like, oh, he's broadcasting. So he gets to like see all of it, you know, like, yeah, in the NCAA tournament game specifically, it's definitely more of like in the, the role that they had me in was definitely more like working ahead and working while there's basketball still right in front of me. So that was a little different, but um, yeah, just, just, incredible incredible experience I, I wouldn't trade it for the thinking world. of the creighton games that you've been to the packed houses and the ncaa tournament what do you think is the biggest comparison what do you think some people just kind of take for granted uh, because like i could tell you i looked before a game and i saw like everything was was top money and then all of a sudden this the tickets went down because they're depending on who the teams were not all teams travel but when you're at a creighton game they're trapped. We're here. Mm -hmm. They're we're in house. Yeah. What do you think the location of Drake being so close helps for you guys to travel well? Yeah, I think the NCAA tournament committee definitely did something here because they got South Dakota State, Drake, and Iowa State all within six hours of Des Moines. And it really, if you just count Drake and Iowa State, you're within two and a half, three hours of Des Moines, uh, or of Omaha, pardon. Um, and so, yeah, I think coming into Thursday morning, it was the most expensive ticket in the entire NCAA tournament for the first weekend. Um, and a lot of that's probably Iowa state fans. Like let's give them so much credit. They did so many great things in the big 12 tournament. They sold out bars in downtown Kansas city, which I didn't even know is possible. Um, so a lot of credit to the Iowa state fans, but yeah, I, I definitely think and Omaha itself is just so good at embracing events, right? They, they show it every year with the College World Series. And those folks are from all over. So to have just a little extra large crowds, um, Omaha is so well prepared for it and, and, and do such a great job of hosting. And um, yeah, it, it, it's just an incre incredible weekend. We'll get you both out of here on this and in the show. Derek, for you, you're obviously finishing college. What do you feel your next steps are and what's your hopeful uh, journey after college? Well, I'll be looking at work in a probably a TV station or some kind of media group. If not, 
I also look to be doing some play by play, getting and commentating, and start yapping like him. So <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. And JD, what what's your what's your what's some things that you've been thinking about? It's college is ending soon for both of you here in less than two months. Yeah, months. it's wild to think about. It's like I don't know, sixty days or something until I walk. Not that anyone's counting or anything. <laughs> I was sitting courtside at Arch Madness doing homework like during one of the games, and I'm just like, man, I. Man, I'm just so ready to graduate. Right. But um, <laughs> right now I'm in radio, so I'd, I'd, I'd like to stay in radio, keep talking away at things. Um, but we'll, we'll kind of see where that leads me. I've got a couple couple leads, so I, I can't really put anything out there yet, but uh, de definitely looking to make some moves here post-grad. Staying home, staying home, your second home in Des Moines, or do you think it might be something where you're able to come back? Yeah, mostly looking at Des Moines. One lead is remote, so I could end up pretty much anywhere. Um, definitely looking to come back too. I've got all my family and my friends here as well. So open to anything. Absolutely. Man. Well, March Madness is kicking off. You guys saw the, the matches last week and, and we have a whole set of new ones this week. I couldn't believe that they honestly picked Nebraska and Texas A&M to play both <laughs> men and, and women. women. Um, so, and, and I mean, I hate to say it, but there's a chance Oregon plays Creighton. But that's obviously already happened. But it is what it is. <laughs> um, that's crazy to me thinking Dana Altman and 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 McDermott. I mean, I, to be a fly on the wall in that building yeah. would be just crazy. But uh, once again, this is Wired Access Podcast. We appreciate you guys listening. If there's one piece that you can listen for, if you're a social media specialist or you want to get into that, you have a son daughter that's looking to get into that. It's okay. Esports. It's okay. There's opportunity at all these colleges. There's ways to find your way into the college to do things at the college. Don't be afraid to share, like, and we'll see you next time.